Hello. Very good. Well, thank you very much. And welcome to this workshop of digital marketing. First of all, I would like to thank for the invitation. I really enjoy to share technology topics. And well, let's begin. We have a lot to share and very little time. So what we will see in the next 25 minutes is a small introduction of what is digital marketing and why is it important and how we can use it. There's the strategies to sell our own products or our own services. The second one has to deal with concepts like the importance of the market identity, the use of data, and how can we uh, strengthen a value proposal. And the third one has to do with tools. One of the most interesting things of digital marketing is without realizing we already have the tools to begin. We just need a uh, internet connection and the apps that many of them are free and the majority of us, we already have them. And finally, to speak about the future, the future of digital marketing. So let's begin. Digital marketing is, a di we have to uh, differentiate between normal marketing, we understand as those as strategies and actions that try to reach the objectives of our, an organization, the actions that you do to sell more of your products or reach more consumers with our services or disseminate an idea through the market. And digital marketing has this characteristic that uses digital technologies. Many experts define it as the design and implementation of marketing strategies through a digital channel. When we speak about digital channels, we're speaking about social network, chats, emails, any digital means or channel that helps you to connect with other people. It can be a company, a person, a product, a service. And the most important is that digital marketing can help us independently of what we do. Specifically in this workshop, I will focus in agricultural topics, but within the system, there's complementary services. We can think that there is a need of people that can make digital marketing for cooperatives, for small producers that maybe already have the product, but they are missing the digital connection to have access to new markets. And finally, an important part is to see how we have the transaction from the product, the logistics, and the payment so you can receive money in a digital way. So now, what are the main characteristics of digital marketing? I think it's very interesting because on one hand, we have internet and the social networks. Finally, 99% of the statistics of the Mexico Internet Association that says that 99% of people use Facebook of have installed Facebook in their smartphones. And we use the second application that we use the most is WhatsApp, among others, because maybe you have YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, etc. So I think it's important to understand the great opportunity that we have in the digital world. And of course, we have to be careful. I was lucky to be in the prior panel listening to the amazing uh, panelists, and they spoke and said that we had to be careful this access to internet should be inclusive and should try to have this access to this important connectivity. Because if we have that connectivity, if we do not leave anyone behind and we can include them in the digital world, the opportunities are immense. The second part is the immediate nature. In the analogic world, in the atom world, uh, things take a little bit longer, you have limitations. Maybe if you're going to make a payment, you have to go to the person to whom you have to pay physically, and this can take you from one minute to five hours. 
depending how far the person is. It has to deal also how quickly we make the transactions and how quickly we can take care of clients at the same time. Think as a store. If you have a physical store, maybe you can take care of one customer at a time. But if you have someone in charge, or if you have two or three employees, you can take care of more people. But in digital, the processes are automatic, and you can take care of 5,000 people immediately. And the third thing, it has to be the uh, democratic nature of the tools. This is what they spoke in the previous panel, how these technologies do not stay in a group of people, but how they become more democratic and we can have access to them in a free way and that we can have training that help us to understand how to use them. These tools in the last 10 years have been more democratic and maybe this is the most important that I would like to emphasize in this small workshop is that all we can have access to these tools. We all can learn, we can use them in a way that gives us value and that help us with these important topics like climate action and to help us to produce more, but at the same time respecting the environment. So this democratic nature, I think it's very important. And the other one, the fourth one, is the two-way communication. These digital technologies allow us to communicate with our clients and our clients with us. So we can have an immediate dialogue to receive feedback, to know if our products and services are giving value to the clients, and let us know in how way we can improve our services and products, having this conversation uh, beyond a traditional poster, or communication that only says the company and the people, but does not reach the cooperative to the people. So the digital marketing has this advantage to be in communication with your community and improve the products. And maybe one of the most attractive ones is the scope. Number five is where we can reach, for example, to market our products. If we have a physical store, it's really good because we can reach our neighborhood, maybe some kilometers around, but it's very hard in the analogical world to reach to other cities or other countries. But with the digital and market digital marketing, we have those opportunities nowadays, as I said, that are more accessible within our mobile apps. And with the gradual increase, hopefully it will be quicker, of having access to internet. So who can use digital marketing for its products or who needs digital marketing? The answer is simple. Everyone can use it. Digital marketing does not need that you have university studies or higher education studies. Truly, it is something that everyone can learn. It's something that there is a lot of information of how to learn these technologies, and the complexity has reduced immensely in the last 10 years. Before doing these things, you had to program your own web page to write a code and to make things that were complex. But nowadays, and we will see it at the end of the workshop, that the technology has increased dramatically. So moving forward, let's see how you can see the advantages of digital marketing. I think some of its advantages are that you have uh, results that you can measure. And that is really important because when you have a business, you want to know how much you're selling, who are you selling, what products are being sold the most, which ones are remaining, why are not they being sold. All that information, when you make your information digital and you send online or you have a digital campaign, you can have access to this result and this information that is quite important. So let's move forward. The second one has to do with the diversity of products and services. When we work with digital marketing, 
we can make uh, digital marketing campaigns for any product or activity or service. For example, if we focus in products, um, agricultural products, we can sell any product that you might have or a service or a knowledge and the diversity is immense. The advantage of having capacities in digital marketing is after its application is immense because all the industries we are doing digital marketing if we want to reach new markets. The third one has to do with the availability. With digital marketing, it helps you to be available always. If you have a traditional store, you open it at eight in the morning and you close it, no, I don't know, at six in the afternoon. But in digital marketing, where you use these campaigns, this machinery that is promoting your products can be 24-7, especially when you have different time zones. And because the people can buy your products anytime, through digital marketing campaigns, you can contact and people can buy at 11 p.m. at 3 in the morning. And for you, the next day, you will see what are the new orders that you can fulfill later on. Um, to have the loyalty, it's very important, number four. How we can do that, the people that are buying can recommend and keep buying, and you can measure that with the digital results that you have. So you can detect if a client already bought once and they bought again and again, and you can see more or less detect if in your geographical areas, they are buying more than in others. So that can help you to address or direct your efforts of digital marketing to increase or to strengthen certain areas where you want to have more sales or you want to get your product known. And the last point that I wanted to let you know is the precision. Digital marketing helps you to be very precise. It helps you say, I want to sell products to women between 18 and 25 years that live in this area, in this country, and that like or are studying uh, high school or university. So you can be very specific who do you address your products so they are more efficient and not only you can publish in a way where everybody sees it, but in the end, the people that are going to buy are very specific. So there are some elements of a marketing, the digital marketing strategy. How do you create your brand? How you have a commercial identity and a uh, I use uh, FAO, everybody knows that brand, that color, that logo, and that isotype, when you see it immediately, you know that it has a reputation, an image of that brand or identity that has generated throughout time. So we have to do the same with our brands. If our brands are not recognized, so people cannot choose them, they cannot look for them, they cannot be loyal to the brand. So that's why the brands are so important. The second one is the value proposal that has to do what makes your product different and how you can differentiate it from other products. That is also a very important part of digital marketing. And my favorite one that I devote to data is what data say about the market and its characteristics. But we'll see this one little by little. If you think, for example, in mar uh, brand identity, this um, logotypes that we have here immediately remind us something that we use all the people that we have access to internet. So this quickly, it tells you what is it about, what's the name, what do they do, and they have a prestige and an identity. And in the same way, when we make a product, we can assign a brand that has to do even with the personality of the founder of the company or the cooperative and the message that you would like to convey, whether it's rural tourism, uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, dairy products, whatever you want to sell, 
it's very important that you package it, that you give it an identity so you can distinguish from other brands that probably are maybe similar. Why is it important? Because it gives you recognition, reputation, the perception that how is it that you uh, carry out your brand and it gives you the opportunity that the people buys is loyal to your brand and trust you. If you think that the brands that you buy, whatever they are, maybe the milk brand or the clothes or shoes, you buy them because you recognize them, it has a good reputation, you perceive them as an ethical brand, honest, etc., and you trust them because that's why you buy the products that you, you buy because we trust in the quality that we are expecting or furthermore. Now the data, I think, as I said, one of the most important parts, data our, are our best friends. Data gives us, help us to understand how many people have had access to the data, how many people have had impressions, have given a click to your product or your announcement, how much a campaign costs you, every click that a person gives, how much did you spend in the campaign, and how much did you have as a return in sales or clients. So it's very important to see the data. And the good thing is that there are many platforms like Facebook, and I quote Facebook because it's the most used, but there are other ones where this analytics are included in like in Facebook. So to do these things before it was very complex some years ago. And nowadays they are in the platforms. They have an already important uh, data. It helps us also to understand what we do not see. For example, if we see the density of the people, where they are concentrated, where I can sell which products, what cities, for example, what are they looking in the cities, for example, and now we're going to see like the trends. If you see the people with greater frequency in Google, which is an important platform to be able to do this search to see what the people are looking and through that information you can say oh yes in the city they are asking for I don't know certain type of biological products so I can go into that market some important elements of the value proposal is on one hand you have to differentiate what type of benefits the client should expect of your brand what is different, what good things he is going to receive from you or your product when they consume it. The second one has to deal how, in which way your product or your service solve or satisfy your client's needs, how the benefit that you're giving your client, what type of problem it solves and how it solves. The third important thing of a value proposal, how your brand is different, why they are going to choose you and not other people that sell a similar product. And the other one is why. What's the reason they should use your products or consume your products? If you think why, maybe the two products are similar, but because it has ethical environmental reasons, uh, social reasons, etc., and you decide why you consume the product and not another one. Some examples, here we have some examples so you can see how the value proposal is simplified and from here we have many other things, but we will not have time. But here you have four, be green, um, which are vegetable 100% free of pesticides. So very specific, You're, they're selling you why 100% free of pesticides, how, what are they doing, and what's the difference in this 
value proposals. The second one, agricultural solutions, so you can produce more with less. And this is very important, the simple nature, it's key. So quickly, the client can say, oh, yes, with this, I'm going to produce more and with less. The third one has to do with um, soil data, precise in real time. This was a piece that we needed in the farming. They produced this information and now they satisfy the need uh, as the, the piece of a puzzle that was needing. And the last one is the financing. And what is the benefit? And they hook you so you can go and explore with greater detail their services of the food basket. The other aspect of the digital marketing, there, okay. The importance to know who is your client. It's not the same that you sell products through to a person of 15 years old, to a person who is 30 or 40 year or 50 or 60, or to groups like families or people that live in certain regions and that have certain cultural traits. So in your marketing strategy, you have to understand who is your client and above all, the profile of your client. For example, the social demographic profile of your client, age, gender, uh, working activity, the schooling, that will help you understand more the clients that you will address to be able to find the adequate channels. Like a typical example is that the newer generations are using other social networks like TikTok or Instagram. And Facebook is for uh, like an older generation, for example, my age. And it's very important. If certain clients, if your product is devoted to young people, maybe you should use other social network than Facebook. The second one is location. Where are they living and where and how your product will reach them? If it's a physical product or uh, digital, because the digital reaches immediately, but it's important to analyze the behavior, the context where they are if it's an area where the climate is in a certain way, it's a rural area, it's an urban area, what type of area, where are you going to sell your products? And the third one is the behavior, the routine, the schedules, activities that can enrich. So you know, for example, the most important hour to buy things, uh, for example, if your clients work the whole week and they work Saturday, so maybe they will purchase uh, the things Saturday afternoon where they are free and they can access internet and ask for your products. So it's very important that the digital strategies know the habits of the people that we get on a legal way. And normally this are public data and that you can ask directly with the authorization of the client. It's a bit delicate, the use of data, but lo uh, normally we use the public information, the information that is in social networks. And it's very important not to use the personal data of the people without their approval. Fourth, the incentives, the goals that you can uh, help them fulfill. For example, if you make digital marketing campaigns, you can help other people to fulfill the sales market of selling in other places. If you sell products, but you do not have someone um, to reach that digital market, you can understand what are the incentives that the people have that are devoted to this or can train you. Now, this is a small introduction and I go quickly to have time for questions and answers. But how to begin? 
if I don't know, if I'm not a designer, how can I create my brand and how can I do these things? I think it's important to share some tools. Another, the other slide, please. For example, lookup.com. This is a platform that can help you to design your teams in a simple way and to use the um, artificial intelligence. I can give you an idea of how to make a logo, a name, those, those type of things. And you can do it uh, free and it can help you. And uh, you have technologies to help you with that. The second one is rockcontent.com. You can generate profiles. You have a work where you can describe how the profile of your user would be, how can you use a logic behind your digital strategy to identify people and to you can understand, oh yes, the target of my product is to reach this group of people and they can find you better and use digital tools to reach them. And what I said, the data, how we can use the data. For example, in Google Trend, it's a free tool where you can see through countries what people look, for example, organic uh, products, agricultural products, of any kind of products that you might use or produce. And you can see what the people are looking for and analyze year by year what they have been looking and what are the products that are increasing. For example, uh, biological products that do not have pesticides, etc. This have had an, an immense increase. So you can segment through city, by country, et cetera, to see where there's greater interest of those products or services. The good thing of digital marketing, if you have access to internet, Facebook and WhatsApp, you can begin. I understand that not everyone has these tools and we have to be very sensible not to leave anyone behind. But if you have those tools, you can start with digital marketing. And the most important thing is to lose your fear. Technology is there to help you so you can reach our goals and do what we want with our products and services. So I will briefly tell you what you can do with Facebook and WhatsApp and an internet account. You can create a fan page. I uh, invented a brand. And this came out of Luca.com. I did it with five clicks. I, you have uh, my logo, my name. And I went to a fan page in Facebook to make digital farm, for, uh, marketing do a fan page. It's much better than a profile. The profiles have limitations. The amount uh, of fans is unlimited. Here, any person can give you a like. The content uh, is important. Here, you can assign administrator to your fan page. You can have apps. It's a bit more complex, this one, but you can connect with other apps, uh, but the profiles know, and you can share posts, uh, and then we can have uh, marketing campaigns. You can have access to statistics. It's much more complex. So if you use Facebook to use digital marketing, do it from a fan page. Now quickly, if you go to the Facebook fan page, you will see that there's a menu and you can see on the right side the page. You create the page, you put the name. I wrote Cafe Cuenca and we have the account and you have a small slogan in Cafe Cuenca that Cafe Cuenca grows in the higher regions of Latin America, then ask you information if you have a web page, the phone number, an email, and you invite friends. If you had a Facebook account, you can invite one friend and you can create a page and put the notification. So each time you see a new activity, it will reach you. And that's it. You have your fan page ready to start to promote, make posts, and create an activity. 
In this publications, there are two types of publications, the organic ones, which is the organic reach that has distribution methods, how the people come, how they recommend you to share, and other ones that are inorganic that this um, do have a cost when how many people can reach costs more. So when a company has a content, you can have more people. You can pay a campaign so it reaches 40, 50, 60,000 people and see how you can translate to your client or Facebook page. Now, within Facebook, you can have a store. You can sell through a store in Facebook. I want to clarify here. This varies from country to country because it has to do with the country's regulations. But this is what you have in a Facebook page in Mexico. But that's why if you can go to the menu, because the policy is different in each country, but in general, it's going to be similar. Here, the difference is that you can go to Meta Business Suite, you go to Commerce, Add Account, and you create an account of the local uh, manager. You put Cafe Cuenca, your email, create, and then you will see how you will do the purchasing and you can decide how they want through a web page or a service like PayPal or uh, uh, something to pay. So I'm ending. You can send only to one country and in the end you will create, you finalize your setting and you will have the same fan page that we created just a moment ago. And now you have an icon that is there that says the shop. And so people can access the products and then buy them. And so there you have that as an e-commerce platform. Other possibilities would be uh, on Facebook where you can publish uh, the marketplace at Facebook and you can say, well, I'm selling this coffee at this price at this city. And then you expect your friends or some of the people on your fan page to answer and, and respond. And the other possibility is to create local groups where you can actually invite, invite, invite your cooperative and amongst the people who are there, you could sell in one city or within a context. You need to be careful with these groups, especially because we have seen cases where people go in that can maybe be vandalizing or have fraudulent activities and not very transparent. So I think you need to be very secure, safe, and not trust just anyone who asks you or orders something because you need to not give, uh, be careful with your passwords and your confidential numbers, uh, card numbers and so on. Please don't share them just like that with anybody. So in addition to pay Facebook, you can also use WhatsApp, which is a, a free tool. But the only difference is that, uh, it, remember you have WhatsApp for business and the regular uh, WhatsApp. And so there's one for WhatsApp for business. So you, you can always uh, connect your fan Book, your fan page from Facebook and you link it to your WhatsApp on your phone, which is one of the things that I've seen more in the within the agro food business. And you just have to download the app. You have it for iOS and for Android and you have WhatsApp business. That would be a very similar story. You create an account, a business account where you have the Cafe Cuenca and you configure the application and it will ask you whether you want to transfer your files from the normal WhatsApp to the business WhatsApp and you say yes or no, depending on how you want to function. And then you write in your profile and you fill out all these fields where you basically offer information about your business. You upload uh, photos and you have, if you, you can have catalogs within your WhatsApp, you can do some very interesting things in the WhatsApp and you can connect with your profile. Uh, your Facebook profile and, and from there you can connect to Facebook and you can also connect to Instagram so you can sell from WhatsApp but you can also uh, sell from the traffic that you attract in Facebook and Instagram and so you can also 
uh, use the computer version, which is basically something that you can link together those two devices, you can link them up. And everything that you created on Facebook, you can coordinate within the mobile, uh, with the mobile device and with a mobile internet, it, that will be just more than enough. So the last thing that I want to tell you about the digital marketing are the payments, because if you can say, well, maybe I got a um, client, but the, he's in a different city and how am I going to get paid? And so this is very, very interesting because we have to look at the way we are going to be bankerized or digitalized payments and that it has to be inclusive and for everyone to have access to these kind of payments and because it's very easy it's very fast and we can do more transactions at a lower cost than in the traditional way and one recommendation and here i would like to clarify this is one of the options and the most popular one in latin america that's the reason why we chose it there are many other options i'm not promoting any one tool or any one platform but this is the one that is most used and that's why I chose it and that's what I based on for in mentioning here. Uh, you can establish the market, the payment, Mercado Pago, and you can get a link and uh, through WhatsApp you can send that line which is M, which says mpayment.la uh, green t-shirt or whatever and the person will tell you, or the application will tell you when they have already made the payment and then you can simply receive the money and then you can send out the product that they have bought from you. And so as you can see, this is relatively easy. It used to be quite complicated just 10 years ago, but I understand that many of you are already using WhatsApp. You've already uh, sending links and you have already uploaded photos. You're all very familiar with the WhatsApp interface. And so all of this that you're seeing looks rather complicated, but it's nothing foreign to what you're already doing. It's the same app, same logic. And that's what makes it very interesting because we've all already got all those apps, apps installed. And, and now we have the opportunity to use it for digital marketing and to uh, and for e-commerce in general. So you can, it's easier and you can have some additional services such as coverage for your clients and you can create packages. In other words, that they can pay, but they can probably not, let's say you're sending out a package, they just pay you when they are actually in receipt of their package. And so that gives them credibility to your business because they know that there is intermediary company that is protecting them. And so they won't release the payment until they say that they've received the package. So there are so many different ways of payment now. And you can use the one that you feel is more convenient for you. That's just one that I've mentioned because it's the one that is mostly used, but there are many others. And again, I, I, I'm Mexican and I, of course, observed uh, what was uh, more, what is more used in Mexico. And so that's why I've mentioned these. And so to do digital marketing and to be able to connect to digital platforms, you can use any one of these and it changes from one country to the other. Uh, but there will be a way in your country where you can actually function and so uh, to allow everyone to access these new markets and these new e-commerce tools and create these communities that can offer their products to a wider audience and market. And another interesting thing that is very good about this kind of payment methods, you can also create catalogs and so you don't have to create a separate link each time they buy a product from you, so the catalogs help. So you can automate these kinds of uh, collections to make it swifter. And this ends my presentation. This is the last slide. Perhaps I've gone too fast. Uh, it's a fascinating uh, topic. And frankly, the future is uh, calling for digital technologies. I don't see any other scenario where in any industry or sector that a few less uh, digital technologies will be used. No, it, they're in, in fact, we're talking about digital economy now, and because that digital economy is gaining ground by the day, I think that the important thing is to be able to show you these tools that you're already using, most likely, and perhaps just go into a little other, uh, some other features and to, and this has to do with inclusion. Okay, thank you very for this fantastic. Oh, it's, I think it's very important that we, through digital marketing, we need to be able to increase our products, our profits 
and our income and while being responsible with the uh, environment and cooperate with the climate uh, actions. And I think that's the message that I have for you now. Uh, please uh, l leave your fears aside. Be a care. Be careful. Ask the people who know and use those tools and ask around it. It is always a good time to learn. You don't need to validate. Have anybody validate you. You can study yourselves and you can uh, open up new opportunities indoors. I see that there are many questions right now and thank you very much. Question one, is there a scheduled, a, a schedule established? Well, it depends on the social networks. You saw the question. Yes, you can establish schedules and it's very intelligent to ask such a question because Twitter, for instance, depends on the country, but on a global scale, Twitter is better uh, maybe mid morning between nine and 11 in the morning or between three and four in the afternoon. But Facebook, for instance, seems to be more around the meal time, right? Because it makes sense because we're perhaps eating and then we're checking our Facebook, which while well, we eat, which is not very good, but that's a, it's a common thing going on. And I think the networks, the social networks really depend on the country. Some countries, people have other uh, food schedules, meal schedules, and some have different climates. And so it changes from one country to another. The important thing is that you can actually Google that and find out and and figure out uh, you can use a, a, a browser like you can ask uh, what's the best time to post an inter on Instagram or on on Facebook and so on. Next question. What aspects must be considered? The first condition, as our panelists, uh, colleagues from the other panel said, first thing we need to do is consider connectivity that needs to be functional. It is not enough to have internet connection if it's 5K or whatever. That cannot be used. It's too risky. You can lose communication. And so when you have electronic commerce, when you say when you click pay, you, you need to make sure that the connection doesn't get interrupted. And so a very important part of the, in the rural territories is that you have a good Internet connection functional. I'm not saying it has to be the, the fastest in the world, but it has to be functional. And based on that, it should connect with the communities and the cooperatives to be able to map out uh, value chains and commercial chains that can be uh, easy to to take your uh, product from your farm to a, a local a community that has at least a minimum carbon print so that we can have we can have information about that because we have some sorts of problems of that type also on the one hand that we need functional connectivity and on the other hand we also need training so somebody should train us on this because it's very important thing is nobody used to know about these things and I I was just I started with this when I was 30 years and and then we didn't use this we didn't know anything about that but some we had so we had to learn about this but some of us did have the privilege of being trained and having somebody by our side to help us so you need to guarantee training sessions for people to be able to access the technologies and to be able to access them to create value for their communities. And the third uh, uh, thing is to promote cooperation through the digital means. And this conversation is already fantastic that we have all these people connected. I would love to see all your faces, but I guess uh, those technologies will be coming up soon. I know that I'm getting your feedback and you're there because you're sending me feedback and I'm receiving your questions. So functional connectivity is a very important part for the community creation and for uh, value chains that is fundamental. Can I if I only have access to Internet when I go to the city, can I still do this? Yes, yes, you can. And this is a very common question in the rural areas because sometimes people have connection when they go to a local a, a near village or near town. 
and maybe the response time is not going to be as as immediate but yes you can you and you need to consider something else slowly we will have more connectivity and more coverage and this is a global trend our colleagues have already mentioned that i don't think there is one country saying oh it's not a priority to give connectivity to people no that is coming it's going to so you can start preparing so that and even if your connectivity depends on when you go to the city or to the next town it's okay the connectivity will come to you and then you're already there all set up and you have the tools and you can help your community to transfer that knowledge and i think that's the greatest thing of the digital part that you learn about the tools and then you can teach others about them and how to use them and i have had previous experiences for instance we have offered a course on digital uh, technologies to small producers or artisans and in six months they come and tell us well now i'm only doing digital marketing for other artisans so this is a has a multiplying effect right and you they, you they can multiply their income keeping maintaining their activity but also helping others and they they are hired by their colleagues or other community members that can pay them for help and then they have more sales because of the digital marketing then they can pay your services so there is also a transfer of knowledge and and it's profitable so what is the other way of uh, of uh, disseminating our fan page and promoting our fan page well there are so many ways of of uh, doing this in many schools of thought in that sense but i think that the most important thing is that at the very beginning at least you may have that you have at least two years of organic traffic otherwise your community would be too artificial so at the beginning of your business you need to have people who really you know and that you really know that they're consuming your product and they're going to recommend you and then there are other strategies what is great about the digital marketing and the technologies uh, is that you can actually have paid campaigns which are that's a traditional thing and other elements uh, with analytics uh, that right now i cannot discuss because i'm i've used my time but i thank you very much for for this opportunity i've enjoyed this very much and I hope this has been useful and an introduction and a motivation so that when you look back you're at your Bay Facebook and your WhatsApp remember that right there you have a technology that is very sophisticated that is ready there that you already know how to use that it's right there ready uh, for mar digital marketing thank you very much for this invitation and the privilege of being with you perhaps not in the same room physically but we are connected discussing technologies and so i thank you for that